seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same. Okay guys, today we are doing a blind. I'm kind of really excited about this. This was my idea. This was, yeah. Yeah, so I've been seeing some of the YouTubers like drink, you know, Bardstown, and I was like, I'm really interested in trying it. And mm -hmm. I know I've seen it down here on your shelves. Yeah, Jamie wanted to do an all Bardstown blind. Currently in the speakeasy, we have four Bardstown Discoveries. We have the Bardstown Prisoner, which is a wine finished version, special release they did. Then we have Bardstown Ferrand, which is another special release they did. And then we also have three Bardstown Fusions. And she wanted to do a nine way or whatever blind. <laughs> and he's like, no, she's no. Like, I thought it's like, that might be a little much for one blind. And she's like, no, 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 I want two ounce pours of every one of them. David. What? Well, that didn't happen. Are you kidding. lying? I am, that was a joke. <laughs> Okay, but yes, for for reals, these guys, we are doing a four-way blind today. It's Bardstown Discovery Series three, four, five, and six, and I've never even tasted six. It's it's actually sealed. We haven't even opened that one on Whiskey Row. Well, I'm so this excited. is a this is a Beyond the Row exclusive, Jamie. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> I thought all of my videos were Beyond the Row exclusives. Well, no, but this is a special one because it's it's like you're getting the taste of this before hey, Whiskey Row even gets a taste of it. David, but, mm -hmm. please don't copy any of my videos. Oh my God, I am so going to start stealing your materials. Not bad. It's Bardstown 3. This one's coming in at 110 proof. Bardstown 4, 110 proof. Bardstown 5. You need help reading the bottle? 108 proof? No, 105 proof. Almost 105. And this one's 111 proof. But seriously, one of the criticisms that people have of uh, Bardstown, particularly the Discovery Series, I mean, these are all $130 bottles. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, they're expensive. And one of the criticisms is throwing in on this one, there is 25% George Dickel or 25% Tennessee whiskey. And then there is 16% in this one. Oh. And granted, it's old. I mean, it's, you know, this one This one was a 17-year George Dickel. This was a 17-year. So it's an old George Dickel, but still $130 for George Dickel whiskey. Some people have problems with that, and I, well, I totally understand. Well, if you understand. slap Bardstown on the label, then... Well, people buy it. These things sell really, really well, and, and I can't fault them for that. All right, guys, I am leaving. Make sure he only pours Bardstown in my cups. <laughs> so let me get these poured. All right, these are all mixed up. I don't know which is which. Jamie's not gonna know which is which, and plus they're all Bardstown like discoveries, so they're kind of similar. They're gonna obviously be a little different, but we're gonna try to figure out which one of them is like best for Jamie's palate. Uh, I'll probably sneak in and taste some as well, but let me get her back in here and then we'll find out. Jamie! All right, I'm ready. Let's do this. Oh, I smell berry right off the bat. Just like this really fresh berry, maybe with a little bit of chocolate. I'm getting a lot of different senses right now Ooh, going yeah. off. Is that There's a like lot of a, berry, like a little a, bit of an apple. Like a pear, okay, a little apple, apple or pear. Apple. Yeah. That's what, mm. But a nice berryness, that's really nice on the nose. That's really good. I don't have any. I really <laughs> want to try some. I taste apple, like an apple crisp maybe. Wow, is that chocolate? That's... I've never tasted it. That's really good. A bit of a twist of freshness, which is the apple, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, one cool thing is because these are blends, they actually can blend to taste with the available, you know, sourced uh, whiskey they have. I'm mean, gonna get a little spice, but it's kind of like a warm apple, uh, cinnamon, like pie crust, a little bit of a berry. It's got a really, really thick, rich mouthfeel. Yeah. It's got a decent, decently long finish too. It's a good bourbon. That, I mean, that's kind of how you know that it's they're like a quality bourbon because mm -hmm. it just gives you it just coats your mouth all right on to number two guys this doesn't smell as sweet i i think it's baking spices i kind of get right away from the smell Ooh, that's got a really really nice um like a little bit of a gingerbread nose okay maybe that's why i'm not being i'm not oh, it's like gingerbread and brown sugar on the nose oh wow hmm <laughs> Because I like it, but it's not anything that I am used to. Like a brownie, and then there's all this other stuff that I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> very spicy. Very it is. spicy. Right off the, the start of it, yes. Yeah, very spicy, but after that, there is some chocolate. Definitely getting like a chocolate-covered cherries thing. Very cinnamon spice heavy. Okay. 
herbal, kind of an herbaly cinnamon spice heavy. It's not like Big Red, but it's it's definitely more herbal than Big Red cinnamon. This is impressing me. I'm gonna keep it kind of in that middle line. So this is very easy to smell. It's light. I, I smell some kind of freshness. Maybe an apple. Maybe like a sweet apple. And um, what are those apples that are really really sweet? The um, the pink one is it pink lady pink ladies a lot i'm getting a little bit of a corn sweetness on it too on the nose kind of a grainy corn i think sweetness. i think i'm putting that smell in the back of my mind <laughs> because i just want to smell all the delicious flavors the delicious flavors Ooh, i don't i don't know what i'm tasting at the end Let hold me try on it. wait wait i need another first i taste like an apple freshness brown sugar but then it ends and i can't tell you what it i almost get like peach cobbler at the end <laughs> these all seem super spicy to me really taste this one again because like i it's spicy up front but i usually try to ignore that spice because mm -hmm. i know I'm gonna get something better at the end. So I just like, everybody knows that with a proof, it's gonna be some kind of spicy. It's, it's to me, it's spicy. It's got a really good mouthfeel. It's got a kind of a, a nice kind of a sugary sweetness. I'm getting, I am getting kind of like a pie crusty thing toward the finish. I don't get any peach though. Or like the, you know, when you're making a pie and you put the peaches in, you put like a, a sauce with it. That's mm -hmm. kind of sweet. That's what I taste. I don't like the smell of this one at all. It kind of smells like a, like a sour fruit. Really? I smell, I mean, it's spicy. I can definitely tell that. I, I'm getting like a very mild citrus. Sometimes citrus can be like burny, I guess, like, or has that. So I'm getting a little bit of a, mol a molasses on the nose. Hmm. Okay. So it's a kind of a very, almost corn syrup, actually, more so than molasses. I think I'm gonna put all of these on my shelf. <laughs> so I take it that you like it better than it smelled. Yes, a lot better. I taste the corn syrupy, like, mm -hmm. at the beginning. Okay. It ends with more of a sweet, warm feel. I can't place the tasting notes though. Is that like a maple grain or something that like at the end, it's just like this warm Cody. On this one, I'm getting a lot more clove than I got on the other ones, but there's very little spice compared to the other ones. The other ones are much spicier. This one's much more mild, but it's got, it does have a strong clove. On the finish, the finish is really, really mild and sweet, like simple syrup sweetness. It doesn't have a strong flavor. It's not like maple or caramel or yeah, you can't like vanilla sit there and or something. Pinpoint it on that one. But it's it is very sugary sweet. I'm you know what that I sensation. think of is what are those um, that cereal? Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks. Okay. That's what bit. I taste. I get a little bit of that. I get a little bit of that. All right, guys, we are back, and I have decided. So sorry, Apple Jacks. I don't dig cereal. Three, let's see, this guy right here, he, like none of these are bad. So I kind of feel bad putting him on number three because it gives me that light, sweet, mm -hmm. like an apple-y kind of taste. And then number two right here, mmm, this one's good. And number one, guys, there we have it. This, wow. Okay. You like that one? Yeah, this one's really good. All right. So I actually would think, I think I agree with you. I think your number one is my number one. I'm not sure I agree with the rest of them, but I, I do agree that, that this one is the best of the four. Are you saying you like Apple Jacks? I think I like it better than this one for now. I think my ranking would be one, two, three, four. I think I'm a fan of Bardstown. Like I put this in fourth place, but all of these are really good. So Bardstown Discoveries, I found all to be fairly good. The problem is the price. Are these really worth $130 each? Well, I don't think about it. I just come into the speakeasy and drink them. Fair enough. But the criticism for Bardstown isn't their taste. The taste, almost everybody seems to like their taste to an extent. It, the problem is, is are you getting that experience, the $130 experience, compared to other $130 bourbons? Mm -hmm. I feel like if you're going to give me a lineup of four bourbons that I like them all and I have trouble placing them, I don't feel like that's a bad price, $130 a pop. What I'm hoping here is that you'll be able to kind of 
tell me why I like them in okay. this kind of order. It's hard to kind of tell what's the difference. So if you have $130 and you need to get, you can only get one, you're going to go by Jamie's choice. Well, and I provided some input and I agree with your choice. And you know, there is not necessarily a super consistent Bardstown flavor profile. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell there were some similarities as we talked about them. Distillers, blenders, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. Do kind of you know, put some effort into creating a consistency based on what's available, but it's not like they're pulling from the same barrels that have gone through the same climate and the same mash bill every single time. In fourth place, we have Bardstown Discovery Series 3. In third place, we have Bardstown Discovery Series 6. In second place, we have Bardstown Discovery Series 4. And Jamie in first place, Series 5. I'm, I'm a fan. It's it's pretty good stuff. And like I said, the the only question with Bardstown Discoveries is is the value. Uh, to me, the five, it's worth the money. The six, obviously we just opened it up today. Mm -hmm. It needs to come into its own sweetness wise, so it's hard to decide. As of right now on Cork Pop, I don't think it's worth it value wise. Okay, because yeah, I did find this one to be very spicy right yeah. off the bat and it like that's kind of probably why I put it in this third place mm -hmm. and that that sweetness might come out over after it's been open for a little while mm -hmm. i think the bardstown series three i don't really think it was worth it not sure it's worth 130 dollars. and then i think the bardstown series four i think that one is actually probably pretty close value wise to being worth it i'm excited i want to go to kentucky and go to bardstown it is actually on our list. We're going to go to Bardstown and then obviously... Bucket list. Let's check that baby off. We'll have to go to all the different distilleries in Bardstown and there is a lot of them. David. <laughs> What's up, Jamie? Thank you for coming in the speakeasy today. My pleasure. Anytime you want me to set you up a blind and, and talk about bourbon, I'm your man. Any, anytime I want you to come in and drink some Bardstown? Bardstown, whatever. I feel like you don't give these fellas enough uh, showtime. I don't. Okay. Other other folks have them covered, and um, I'm a so fan. I feel good. like they actually are um, kind of competing in the old Forester uh, tub right there. Really? Although the old Forester 1910, you could get two and a half bottles of it for one of these. It's a lot of. Why old do you got to do that? Why do you got to do that? It's a reality. Money matters when you're actually spending it at the store. Thank you so much for watching Beyond the Road today. If you ended up liking this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Jamie said she needs more subscribers. <laughs> and until next time. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey Jamie, guess what? <laughs>